orc archetypes beast snagger edition archetypes a very typical example of a certain type or thing person or thing welcome guys we'll be getting back into our series of orc archetypes these are just set examples given to you to be used as a tool to help guide you to building or creating your future wall to run the unit in the army the way you want to run it right so we we're here on this archetype series we like to hit a few tactical summary points going in give you a few list examples go back to the summary to hem it all together and then end it right there so let's go right into the summary one thing to keep in mind when you are running these beast snagger lists is one of the most common mistakes i ever see players make or hear players make is that they consistently over commit they assume because they have a feel no pain because they have a art and nail strats and because they are squigs that they can tank an entire enemy army or that they just have to run up into the middle of the board and start occupying space okay remember guys precision beats power that means putting the right units into the right things matters and timing beats aggression meaning when you choose to call the wall when you choose to commit with your actual punchy units not your chaff that's what actually ends up winning you games if you just throw your frontline squigs into everything you will pay the price next is resource management of stretch and chaff units we are limited on chaff units typically for these beast snagger lists as they do come a bit more elite as they are the kind of list that crumps your enemy therefore you need to be sufficiently aware of what you need to do and what is being used for what as well as the resource management of your stratagems everybody knows you're going to use art as nails but when and where and who's going to get the cp reroll if you need that right art as nails everybody in your beast snagger list could hypothetically use it but there's certain types and certain moments where you're going to need to use it, okay? Next is respect your opponent's potential. That means when you are deploying, when you are moving into the open of the battlefield, respect your opponent as in either completely hide the unit or always make sure someone is touching cover. That way you can get a better armor save. Don't just walk into the middle and think about, I'm going to do this, can't wait for the wall, I got a five up in foam, okay? To getting a better save, the stuff that only has a minus one AP, stuff that might chip you, definitely matters when you're running these squig beast snagger list units, squigs as a whole in general. Another thing is utilize the terrain advantages and your OC potential. As in, if the board is a bit cluttered, you do have large bases to block people out from your objectives. Your beast snaggers do, on average, have two OC, and you are going to have more OC than about half the opponents that you do face which is pretty good for an elite list. Maximize your mortal, mortal wound potential. Most people forget that the squig hog boys do have grenades. They do have the grenades keywords. They also has the squig bombs, okay? So you are going to lack shooting for the most part on these lists. Your mortal wound potential needs to be um, very, very well thought out. And then patience is a virtue. Pretty much going back to all of these as once is that anybody can call the wall and run into the mid table, but not anybody can patiently wait for their proper timing to get up into combat when the time is right so that being said let's look at one of our first list this is a list that i particularly wrote in this list we have the typical beast boss on foot no enhancements beast boss on squigasaur no enhancements but if you choose to you can put adwapa's kill chop on him mazrog two uh knobs on smash squigs one has follow me lads if you choose to give adwapa to the other guy that's okay and then a typical war boss on foot next you have three beast snagger units as battle line four trucks Two to carry, uh, three to carry the beast snagger boys, one for your war boss and knobs. You have a unit of Gretchen, the 10 man unit of knobs with the power claws, two six man units of squig hog boys, and a storm boy unit. Now, you can choose to go all in and just bring a large unit of squig hog boys. They're about equivalent to the unit of knobs. I personally like to bring the knobs because there are certain matchups where that two AP, like when you run into Armor of Contempt, Terminators is going to make the difference. And you really don't want to be running your minus one AP reduced to minus zero AP into two up saves. So I find it to be very useful when I'm running um, squig heavy list to put some knobs in there for the additional AP. Okay, this list is what you'll see most people start leaning into. You get you have the Beast Snaggle Boys. Two of the units are used for MSU scrimmaging or grabbing objectives, maybe even to be traded. One unit of Storm Boys just for scoring. You have the two units of Navan, uh, sorry, the, the Navas Clash of Squigs in each unit. That way you can have two reliable hitting bricks, guys. I know that a lot of people don't like to pay the cost for the knob, but one, it helps you get into combat as the base is larger. And two, getting plus one to hit for your mounts as your mounts hit on four does make a big difference. And I do favor it. You don't always need it, but in a list like this, I would play it because I'm not running the third unit 
of squigs. Okay. And keep in mind, you do have the beast boss and one unit of beast nagas on foot, and then you have the war boss and the knobs. Those are your precision killy units, right? You're going to keep them in the truck, try to keep them safe. And when the time is right, you're going to dismount, wah, charge, annihilate your opponent. Okay. So this is what, and remember guys, these are a archetypal list. You can extract or add in based off what you really want. You want more squigs? Go ahead, take out the knobs. If you want less beast snagger boys, go ahead and bring something and bring normal boys. But that is archetypal list one. Uh, squigs, a lot of characters in this list. Um, I don't normally bring this many points of characters and it just goes over the threshold of 700, but it's still a good list. Um, and it doesn't spam trucks or anything too much. As for our next example, we'll be going into a list that I found a lot of love in is the Beast Nega Mobs. This was actually um, brought to my attention by a man called Josh French. He actually scored, ended up doing very well at GTs. We did a video on that as well if you want to go look at his matchup summaries. But in, in general, this is a very similar list to his with slight substitutions, as I think a lot of people need to see it and not just be restricted to Beast Snagas on mounts when you're making your Beast Snagas list. Sometimes you want to get heavy with the boys. So on this list, you have Mazrog and then two pain bosses when was the last time you seen a pain boss guys right one is follow me lads one is cutting but brutal the pain bosses do have anti-monster anti-vehicle they're a base strength nine at minus two two damage but they do hit on fours so they're not reliable damage but they do help your 20 man unit you do have 20 man units and one 10 man unit one truck which is just for the 10 man unit now you have two hunter rigs i know a lot of you guys have kill rigs from last edition just use it as a hunter rig you can start transporting these big units around if you're going for a more competitive list um, and you don't like the durability or the offensive potential of the hunter rig, go ahead and go into the battle wagon. You can drop the war bikers for a storm boys unit. Battle wagon is only five more points in the hunter rig. But I know a lot of you guys got your kill rigs out there. Don't be scared to use it for fun. One unit of Gretchen so that you can hold your objective, possibly get more CP. Here again, two units of uh, squigs, but they don't have the knobs, right? Totally viable not to run them with the knobs, guys. Two units of Storm Boys for scoring, and then a War Biker unit, as I chose to run a War Biker unit, just for something to throw away, still get up to the board quickly as you position for the counter charge or for the wall turn, right? In this list, um, Josh ended up going against some very good armies, and he still had a great time and had a very successful games because the Beast Snaggas getting up to Strength 6, large, large mass volume of attacks, the pain boss gives them a great durability of the five up feel no pain. You have access to artist nails. They are safe within the battle wagon or the hunter when it's time or the hunter rig when it's time to come out and throttle. They have great OC with them being two OC each, and then the pain boss being able to bring D3 back. So you are still playing the mission with this list, guys, while you're getting crumping, right? While you get crumping, you get stuck in, you're still winning on the objectives. People aren't always prepared to deal with that many B Snagger boys and 20 B Snagger boys hard hard counters some typical meta bullies such as maybe necrons uh gsc don't really like seeing a big unit of beast snaggers running up on them and just picking up their units with very little uh, problem right so with this kind of list guys it gives you the flavor the funness of using all your infantry but still the mobility the durability and the punching potential of a typical beast snagger list mind you you still have all those feel no pains the hunter rigs still give you feel no pains Okay, so even though they don't reduce AP, it's okay. Feel no pains, the name of the game. And hard as nails is where we get stuck in. Whoa. Now, oh, and one thing to bring in mind, guys, is we do do some math on this, right? And David, yes. you can fill me in. Yeah, for that 20 man beast snagger unit that you're referring to. Ooh. Against an armager, it's averaging 12 wounds. So you're you're taking that knight out. Uh, big knight averaging nine wounds. Uh, you mentioned the aberrants. You can you average six slain models. There you go. And that's an expensive unit. Very that's three hundred and thirty yeah. points for a ten minute. Oh yeah. So you're still under that that point threshold. Yes, you are. Uh another common enemy that we see is the horror specs, and you're averaging twelve wounds, so you're chipping half the wounds. And that's that. and that's including More the field no half. and that's including the field no pain, correct? Yes, yeah. that's with mm -hmm. the five of field no pain. Yeah, okay. The horror spec can get that, guys, remember. Okay, and that's what I mean, guys. So you think, oh, I can't run boys. Boys get picked up too easily. I can't run mobs. You can. Of course, you do have to keep them somewhat safe. I don't recommend always walking them up the board. But in this case, put them in that hunter rig. Put them in that battle wagon and get crumping. Stay on that middle objective with that huge OC. And then the squig hog boys can take the flanks if you have to, even without character support. 
So I really appreciate this list. We did a video on it if you want to go hear more. But as for the third list, is another list that inspired me. Squiggoth plus Stompa. So this is still in the Beast Naga archetype, guys. This list was brought to us, our attention by Andrew Chipley, which is another GT player. He went five and two, I believe. Or was it four or two? Yeah. We did a video on him as well. You can go check that out. But this is a very similar list to his as well. Um, and we felt like it was good to bring to your guys' attention because people are kind of stuck thinking they can only run squigs or if they run a squig off, they can only run a squig off by himself. Have a throw a wrench in your toolbox. Ugh. Throw a stomp in that list as well, and you'll have great success. Starting with this list, you got Mazarog, of course. You have a big mech with shock attack gun. Most people are saying, what? What's going on? Hey, don't knock it till you try it. Inducing battle shock from range can sometimes make a great difference in the game, okay? You have a mech giving plus one to hit, of course, for the Stompa. The super cyborg body is most likely just there for um, in case he blows himself up with his custom Blasta or um, you just want that durability for fun. Beast boss on Squigasaur with Ed Wapa's Kill Choppa. A lot of people argue back and forth on what they prefer. It's still 100% viable, still very good. You need that unit that's reliably destroying things. And David, how reliable is the beast boss on Squigasaur into crumping things. Yeah, so this uh against a Lancer, you're looking at eight wounds. Armager, he can chip off seven wounds. And again, this is on average. You can always spike mm -hmm. those dead wounds. And these have the six of feel no pains as well, right? Yeah, and this is the armager with six of feel no yeah. pain. They can get up to five if they're honored. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna go based off what they start the game with. Mm -hmm. Uh Doomsday Arc, he can chip off eight wounds. That's more Three quarters of its wounds after that it's not going to be as efficient with its heavy anti uh tank weapons yep and then uh horror specs with that five up funeral pain you're still taking six wounds off so he's he's chipping these big targets and you're definitely getting your points back. and he's definitely not just getting picked up all right with that four of feel no pain next in this list guys you see no battle line no transports just straight to the good stuff one unit of aggression hold that backfield objective Two units of flash kits that are going to go in your gargantuan squig off and then a stompo with the mech guys this list you might be looking at it and thinking no way this is viable he proved it's viable he very much did artist nails can be used on the gargantuan squig off i repeat it can be used for he is not a vehicle and he can allow the flash kits to shoot out of combat with him um sorry shoot out of him with the firing deck the flash kits themselves guys for 95 points in small units is consistently overlooked when i'm really sure it shouldn't be as it's one of those diverse units as i like to call it flash gets have a base four attacks with their choppas base strength five with those choppas okay and they're only 95 points 10 point difference than a basic boy unit with more strength each per model has more attacks and then during the wa you get up to five attacks per guy of course a unit of boys has slightly more but they don't have two ripple guns right so flash guys guys are low-key good skirmishing units don't overlook them and um andrew figured that out real quick on this list huh so this is another archetype you want to use that uh gargantuan squig off i know a lot of people bring it up go ahead and bring this tampa with it because if you got a squig off you most likely got a stomp with two you flashy get um if not guys we talked about some of the other units you could bring in this as well but why do you bring a stompa with the gargantuan squig off because with art is nails and the stomp already being 14 toughness Who's picking any of those guys up reliably, right? Um, you're going to be challenging people on the stat check, and that is a proper way to play the Beast Naga archetype. Sometimes you're just stat checking your opponent, guys. Okay, uh, David, you want to say something? No? Okay, and then we can go back to the summary. So remember, guys, these were just some examples. Never think that I'm going to just have to directly copy these. I know I showed you successful lists because those lists are a successful archetype, something that you can look at and say, this guy already did great. I'm sure he had practice. I have these units as substitutions. I'm going to use them instead. I like them more. I have them painted, um, but I'm still going to try to keep the same framework of what each list did, which is exactly what an archetype is, right? Just keep in mind, guys, that I know you have your feel no pains. I know your T7. I know you want to crump. I know you want to get stuck in. I know you want to advance and charge. But be patient, for patience is a virtue, okay? And when you have these elite units and, and kind of bricks of arm, uh, models and, and, and kill the potential, that's the opposite of what other archetype, archetypes orcs are running right now with a lot of chaff, a lot of board control, a lot of scoring. But with this list, with these lists, 
you have to be a bit more tactful, a bit more selective on when you choose to wall and when you choose to get stuck in. Um, and that'll actually help take your list further because B snagger lists, the difference with them is that the same models that end up taking a hit, being there to get hit, can actually survive for the most part. Not always, not in your army's full enemy's full potential, but if you get into a fight, you crump that unit, an enemy unit comes to charge counter charge you, there's a chance you'll stay alive in there as well. And that's what the difference between the Beast Snagger boys and the Beast Snagger archetype list is compared to other maybe MSU skirmishing, um, a mass truck list, right? Is once those units get attacked, they're just gone. Enemy just deletes them, right? But when a Beast Snagger boy unit or a um, Squig boys unit gets hit, there's a good chance, guys, between the feel no pains and your heart as nails, that you're going to stay stuck in and you're going to be able to keep playing the game and keep crumping. And that's the difference between that list. And but which is also why being very respectful of your opponent's potential and utilizing your terrain matters a lot because you can't let people get free damage off on you as your army is already built to somewhat withstand their initial punch when you get close enough to get punched and then continue the momentum by just crumping and going straight through them, right? So respect your opponent. Know that the feel no pain is reliable as in to mess up their math, but it's not going to always keep you alive. And sometimes you just have to know that but still be ready to get crumped in. I'm stuck in and still be ready to counter charge your opponents, right? So B Snagger archetype, guys. That B Snagger archetype, guys. That's where we're at with this list. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here and give it a look over. If there's any questions, criticisms that you want to give, maybe give me your preference on who gets Ed Wapa's kill chopper. Do you like Cunning Bub Brutal? Have you used the pain boss? Are you tempted to use the hunter rig now? Right? I bet you are. And if you're not, then where's that green skin energy? Whoa! All right, everybody. I appreciate you being here. But there's one thing to keep in mind. Don't cross the wall because we knock your teeth out. Whoa!